is it like 20 years later to walk around here and seeing these essentially holes in the ground? It's a feeling that brings me back to that day because these were my buildings, my firefighters, and this city I love with people, thousands of people trapped from 90 different countries. So every anniversary when I look out um, and I stand here, I feel this emotional connection um, for that day. You still see these buildings in your mind's eye? I do. It's uh, During the year, I leave all those feelings in my heart. And on the anniversary each year, I take it and put into my thoughts where I rerun the videotape. It was a day kind of like today. The sun was out, not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, today very much reminds me of 20 years ago. Beautiful, bright, sunny day, not too humid. One of those perfect days until that day at 846 when everything changed. A plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center. First of all, this is the North Tower footprint. How far away were you when the plane hit? We were all about a dozen blocks away at a normal gas leak, a routine gas emergency in the street. And then I, we heard this loud noise of a plane coming overhead. And as you know, you never hear planes in Manhattan because of the tall buildings. And then I watched this plane flying at a low altitude race past us. The plane's going this way. Going along the, uh, the Hudson River at a very, very fast speed. And so low I could read on the fuselage the word American. And then I saw the plane aim and crash into the World Trade Center. The FBI, according to the Associated Press, is investigating a hijacking. This is a tragedy any way you spell it. I knew that this was no accident, uh, that this was a terrorist event. And at least initially, I was going to be the person in charge. Because you were the closest fire chief, battalion chief, at that particular moment. I was the closest fire chief um, at that moment. And the companies I was with, I took, and then I transmitted extra alarms for more resources and more firefighters to come to the scene. Do you remember what you said on the radio? I remember having to slow my thinking down a little bit and create a, a delivered calm and delivered thinking. We just had a, a plane crash into a floor of the World Trade Center. So I'm asking for, before I even get there, for more than 150 firefighters to come to the scene. You immediately sent your firefighters into the North Tower. That was the one that had been hit, the only one that had been hit at that point. Did you know what you were sending them into? I knew that we had multiple floors on fire, and I knew that thousands of people were trapped. And in, at least 10,000 people were in just the North Tower alone. And I also knew that this was the most dangerous fire of our lives, and certainly the largest fire since the beginning of FDNY. Do you remember when you walked in the lobby, what it looked like, what you were hearing, what you were smelling? When I walked into the the North Tower, into the lobby of the North Tower. I could remember seeing a couple people to my right that was burnt. And my initial instinct was to help, but I stepped back. I knew our EMS was right behind me. And when I walked in, I saw broken glass and part of the marble off the wall. And I went right up to the fire safety director and I asked him, what did he know? Where was the fire? And it was over 90 stories up. It was, it was 90 stories up. But the fire safety director told me at the time that it was somewhere above the 78th floor. And that was the best information we were getting from the instruments in the building and reports from people in the building. Elevators aren't working. And so these firefighters, you're asking them to climb 60, 70, 80 or more stories. We hear about heroism and firefighters running into danger and running into fire, but had you ever been confronted with something that kind of challenge? I don't think any of us was, 
were ever committed, were ever faced with such a devastating uh, fire that was started by a, a passenger plane used as a terrorist weapon. And we knew that there was multiple floors on fire. It was a daunting task. But we also knew that, that people needed us. You made a lot of calls that day, a lot of gut-wrenching decisions. One of them was the evacuation order to evacuate both the North and South Tower, which had not been hit at that point. How critical a decision was that? A little bit before 9, nine o'clock, I ordered the fire safety director, Mike Hurley, to evacuate the South Tower, the tower that was not hit. The only thing is that things were happening very quickly that morning. And then at 9.03, we heard another loud sound of jet engines. And that was the second tower that was now hit. But little decisions that morning made a difference. It gave some people that extra edge to move. And we know that that saved many people. How much are they carrying at that point? Firefighters each carry about 60 pounds. The full bunker gear and helmet and boots, hose they carry, as well as firefighting tools. And they were going up these narrow stairs, maybe about four feet wide. And as they were going up, people were coming down. And the firefighters did some ordinary things. As people were coming down, they said, don't stop. Keep going. You can make it out of here. And we know from people that survived that those words was the difference between life and death. You use the term ordinary things. Is that how you look at the events that day, that ordinary actions that save lives? I look at my hero firefighters, and I think they would say the same thing that day we did ordinary things but in an extraordinary time in history. And I think that's a challenge for all of us to be able to, to do things when it counts the most. What did you learn about your own leadership that day? That day I learned that leadership is not about authority, but it's about connecting to others and connecting to my firefighters whether it was talking on the radio, seeing them in the lobby, or ordering them out of the building. You write in your book about the looks on the faces of firefighters as they flooded into the lobby and the lack of conversation. What was the connection you were all making in that moment as you knew what you were walking into and you knew what you had to do and it was going to be tough? Firefighters came in quietly because they knew as they were responding, they looked at the burning towers and they knew how dangerous this was going to be. So they came in quietly, which is unusual. Firefighters are usually very noisy. And they just asked one question. Chief, how can I help? You were focused on the North Tower. Unbeknownst to you, the second tower, after it had been hit, collapsed. Did you have any awareness that the building next door had gone down. All of a sudden, at 9.59, I heard this loud roar as I was standing in the lobby of the North Tower. And I moved quickly to my left, maybe 10 feet into a little alcove, pushing some folks in front of me. And then the entire lobby goes black. I couldn't see the hand in front of my face. And I thought maybe some debris is falling from the top of the building, and that we were the only ones in trouble. But in that blackness, I knew we couldn't command like that. And I got on the radio and said, command to all units in Tower 1, evacuate the building. You were asking firefighters to leave a burning building, full knowledge that there were people that you couldn't reach. Perhaps the first time in history that a fire chief ordered the evacuation 
of our firefighters with a thousand people in the building. Did you ever think you would be called upon to make that kind of decision in your career? I could have never imagined being in a, in a moment to make such a, a critical decision. It ultimately saved lives, though. It saved many of the lives, our first responders, as well as people in the building started to move more quickly. You were making a lot of critical calls that day, and let's be honest, there was a personal connection. Your brother had gone in the building. You had seen him that morning. He went up. Are you thinking about him as you're processing all these other things? My brother, as he came in, we were able to look at each other and wondered if we were both going to be okay. And certainly I worried about him as he, he was going up. But I also looked at many of the other fire officers that came in and firefighters, and I ordered them up. So my concern was ab about all my firefighters that day, and particularly my own brother, Kevin. What made you write this book after 20 years? I wrote the book Ordinary Heroes because I wanted to tell the story from a personal perspective, what it was like that day. But I also wanted to tell the story of my firefighters who did ordinary things at an extraordinary time in history. And I also want people to know that with each of us is the capacity to be, to be an ordinary hero. Was your brother one of the ordinary heroes of that day? Kevin was an ordinary hero. As he was coming down after hearing my evacuation, he stopped on the ninth floor and redirected units and other people from the sea stairs, which entered onto the, the mezzanine and plaza area, to the B stairs, a safer, more quicker way out. And I only learned that from Captain Tardio of Engine 7 that, that told me that my brother saved his life that day. What do you want us to know? What do you want people to know as we mark this anniversary? I mean, we'll hear, you know, we'll hear stories and we'll, we'll relive images, but what should we be internalizing? I think what we should all internalize is that feeling of unity, of coming together, and that we need to do that today. 9-11 was a tragic event, but what we're experiencing today in many different forms is just as tragic, and we need to come together. You know, as we walk along here, you see all these names. These are the people we lost that day. How much do you think about the people that you and your firefighters saved that day? That day, uh, we saved 20,000 people. And I think that's what we have to remember. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.